everybody. I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thank you for joining me on an AACA winning piece of history. We are talking about a car that is approaching the 70 year mark. It's restored. It's a mechanical device. It is driving on the road. People are so hard on cars when you think about it. Like I ask you, do you have a 70 year old toaster that's still working properly or a 70 year old TV that you're using still? And the answer is probably no, right? This car here, you could use every day if you wanted to. This is an amazing, amazing piece. We're gonna look at some detail today that I hope that says to you, because I get this question all the time, hey, Tone, that's a great looking car, but I don't really know, but most people don't really know why it's a great looking car, so we're gonna spend some time looking at the details, the level of restoration, why was this an award winner, and some of the things you get with it. Okay, so some of my favorite styling features of a car of this age. I think about like maybe my grandmother probably had plastic on her couch, right? Do we all remember that? They came from a different time and this is a car from a different time. I smile because I think of like, what was the world like then? Think about this for a second. No internet, no iPhone, no digital camera, no uh, uh, microwave, no so many modern conveniences. However, because this was a more simple time, people did better things with each other, right? We got outside and we did stuff. Here, we're talking about wide whites. The wheels painted the original color of the car itself, right? This stainless hubcap, all of these pieces are restored. These are uh, replicas. These are Firestone uh, Deluxe Champion wide whites, and there are replicas there. We see the call outs for here because originally so many cars came with just six cylinder engines. They didn't come with all of this stuff, okay? Lastly, uh, we look for uh, airplane and jet age references, right? Because we're at the dawn of the jet age, right? And all of these cars now have forward moving pieces here. We have jet here, we have, uh, and when we get to the rear of the car and you see the styling there, you're gonna see the jet engines coming back. We see movement, the car is moving. Everywhere we look on this car, it is moving. And that's kind of the idea behind it. It became much more powerful when the V8s came out and we got down onto American highways and we were rolling. Lastly, to get to uh, a car of this level, we need to talk about the paint, okay? The paint is, on this car, I think uh, pretty impressive. I think it's past pretty impressive and pretty spectacular. Before I do the test here with, these, uh, with the letters that I normally do, I want you just to come up here and see the ceiling and see every ding that we have in the ceiling up above. You can see the light strip, you can see every little piece. So come on up here uh, and look at, in the paint, let's look at the letters here. This is what I would refer to as mirror finish, but also look at the ceiling up there. You can see everything. And we're in these harsh lights. Uh, this is an amazing, amazing paint job, holding up so beautifully uh, and the great styling of the grill. I don't know, man, this is, this is great. We're gonna keep rolling, all right? On to the engine compartment next. So the word show detailed engine compartment gets thrown around all the time, all right? That's really not the way it is. I'm gonna tell you why. Because here is a show detailed engine compartment, and now you'll be able to tell people that's not a show detailed engine compartment when you see what we have here. So come on in, let's take a peek at that. So when we talk about show detailed engine compartment, in here, everything is not black bombed. Every color-coded wire is a different color here. You can see that all the wiring is new. You can see the engine block not only is painted correctly, but it probably has been clear-coated as well because it looks so nice. In here, we have the correct oil bath air cleaner with the instructions for handling that detail. Lastly, uh, around here, we have the stamps from the inspectors as the car went down the assembly line. You say, tell them, well, the what of the who of the what? Yes, they didn't put their name on here, they put the inspection number on here. So for instance, right here, uh, Mr. 532, he handled the trim on the vehicle. And so when he walked around, he made sure everything was in the place that it was supposed to be. Then he put his decal on there to let this car pass uh, his muster, right? And over here, paint guy 232, maybe Mr. Johnson or Mr. Jones or whatever Mr. 232 was. Uh, he went ahead and he made sure that this was a dirt-free paint job. And we're talking 1955, man. We're talking 70 years ago almost, right? Um, he, after inspecting all the paint, buffed, clean, and ready, went ahead and put his stamp of approval on here. That's on there as well. The call-outs for the engine, right? The tags for uh, how to do the antifreeze in here. This is just spectacular. Take a minute and look at the picture and video of this and see the detail of what you're getting because this is an expensive part of the restoration. 
Okay, so we're talking about style, 1955 jet age. We talked about that at the front of the car. Now let's talk about what happens back here and we'll talk about some restoration details as well. First off, we can see the style here. This is the afterburner of the jet engine right here, styled into the car, right? The car is moving. This right here, giving it the look like it has uh, the flow of air going on it. These are all styling things in your mind when you say, wow, that's a great looking car, but we don't really know why. This is what the designers were thinking. This piece of trim, super nice. Nowhere around here is a hole for a gas cap. Why? They're beautiful quarter panels. They didn't want to mess that up. They didn't want to put the gas cap anywhere here. So they hit it right here behind the tag. What a great styling feature, okay? Forget the fact that the chrome is triple plated, super nice. The exhaust system, dual exhaust, all nicely detailed and galvanized, beautiful as well. But then move to the trunk, because if you're gonna to go to a car show, you may never use this car in a car show. This may be a, a beach car or a fun vacation car, a home car, whatever it may be. But if you wanna to go to a car show, like here, you can be proud of this. Check this out for a second matching tire with the wide white and a painted wheel the correct tartan mat inside here all of the detail painted inside even the jack is detailed right the, da the jack looks like a show jack like you might might put on uh its own tv show anyway this right here is uh, part of the jack pack that you put the jack in if you wanted to all right that goes in there and then we look around inside the trunk which you can't see right now they're stainless fasteners so that they last a long time and they don't turn rusty and become ugly over time this is a beautifully restored car now you're seeing why and what the effort so it's probably a two to three year restoration like probably a uh, hundred thousand uh, dollars during its time and it clearly shows how beautiful and the time that was put into it all right, so I wanted you to start out here before we got in. So when you walk up to your car, you go, man, this is a great car. It will give you this smile, right? However, that's only part of the fun of owning a car like this. And the simple fact is when you get in, I want you to hear that. Listen, that is a door that had so much time spent on it, lining it up properly. All right. So what we have now is a real six passenger car. I want you to think about going to dinner um, or uh, out with some friends to some place, going to a winery with a couples, couples, six people in this car, the experience is significantly different, right? You pull up to the Palm and the Porsche gets pushed around the side because this car gets pulled up front. Why? Because this is the pioneer of a car with navigation. You say, Tone, that's 1955, there was no navigation. Ha! I say to you right here, Nav is right there, showing us our way, 1955, it's on the cutting edge. All kidding aside, this dash to me is way better looking than most other 55 vehicles that are out there. I don't like to call any names of any of them, but like this right here, check out the radio. This is the AM radio and it's round style. Instead of being across like this, it fit the motif of all of these gauges. The HVAC system here functions like it's supposed to, all restored and beautifully, nicely working, all of the knobs, Side, maybe you decide to take up smoking uh, because it becomes very fashionable again. I hope it doesn't, but anyway, if it does, so be it. Not for us, but with some people it might be. 120 mile hour speedometer, full gauges right here, showing 14,900 miles on it since it was restored. That's a pretty amazing car, and it's holding up so beautifully in here. The carpets are great, the seats, the door panels. Again, we're talking about lots of options on here. The clock was an option. The AM radio was an option. Power windows were an option. Overdrive transmission was an option. Power top was an option. Wide whites were an option. Two-tone paint was an option, right? On and on and on. That's why this is a spectacular car compared to many others that are out there. All right, so let's close up the video and run down some of the serious, serious bullets we discussed now. We talked about overdrive transmission. Nice option to have. The beautiful wide whites. The AACA winning uh, badge that was on the car. We also talked about the spectacular goldenrod yellow and raven black paint. Triple plated chrome, the interior spectacular. The dash, probably one of the nicest dashes we've ever seen of any car. The detail in here is fabulous. Remember, they were competing against Chevy Tri-5s during that year. Everybody was into the jet age and we looked and saw all of the jet age components that were built into it. This is a cool car. Not for, first off, it's amongst other supermodels here and it looks spectacular. But imagine this car out on the road surrounded by Priuses and SUVs and what have you. It is a show stopper. Anyway, call us 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this. Uh, I love the name, Sunliner Convertible, all right? And uh, if you don't mind, 
Uh, click the like button down there below. That will help us uh, get out there and get the message to everybody. Subscribe to the channel. You get some new content all the time. And if you don't mind, share this with your friends as well. And I will see you on the test drive. Thanks for joining me on the test drive, man. Listen, we are back in time. We are driving. We are circa 1955, wheeling down a road that was probably built in 1955. And I mean, we're watching the the we're watching everything in front of us work the way it's supposed to. The the speedometer and this beautiful glass piece here. I'm watching my navigation, right? My navigation right there on the dash. Watching the echoing along. I should be paying attention to my driving instead of looking at all the cool stuff in the car. But I'm just telling you, when you drive a car like this, first off, everybody loves it. Second, go to dinner, go to someplace in this car. The experience is different. The, the camaraderie with the people in the car is different. It's just a more simple time. And the fact that it's approaching 70 years old. And I keep harping on that because I think to myself, who at your house or who at anyone's house has a lot of 70 year old products? that they can just jump in and use at any time. 70 year old toasters and 70 year old television sets. We're driving a mechanical item, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. We're driving down the road enjoying, uh, this is just amazing to me. Anyway, I hope some way you can find it to get this uh, in your garage. Thanks for driving with us today and I'll see you on the next test drive.